Hey guys, I'm still working on the house from last episode. I have no idea what the hell to do with the ceiling. I suck at ceilings. So if anybody has any ideas, let me know, because I might just end up making a flat ceiling if I can't think of anything. Anyways, today I wanted to talk about an experience that I've had a lot, and this might be something that you can relate to. So, ever since I was a kid, I've loved playing video games. They've been a mainstay hobby for me as long as I can remember. And as much fun as they can be as a solo hobby, what I really, really love is getting to play them with other people. Whether that's playing multiplayer games on the couch, or online, or the old-fashioned taking turns with a controller, it doesn't matter to me. I like the sense of collaborative creativity and novelty. I love playing a game with someone, and it turns into some kind of improv game, where we're just trying to make each other laugh. And sometimes I get really lucky, and the chemistry between me, the friend, and the game just aligns perfectly. And you have one of those evenings where you're both just busting a gut all night. Unfortunately, in most cases, that has not really been my experience with playing games with people. And it's gotten rarer and rarer since I became an adult. When I was very young, this was almost universally the experience I had playing video games with other kids. But things have changed. All of a sudden, I noticed I would invite people to play video games with me. And they would say things like, Oh, well, I'm not a gamer. Or, I don't play video games. Or the ever-frustrating, I can't, I'm bad at video games. And that was frustrating, but like, alright, they're lost. You know, the great thing about games is that if people don't want to play them with me, I, I can just play them on my own. And then more time passed, and I found that as I got into my teen years, suddenly even the friends that I had that liked games, there might only be one or two games that they really want to play a lot of the time. And then in my adult years, I found that I basically couldn't play video games at all with anyone who didn't identify as a gamer. Even people that I knew that played video games weren't really keen on the idea of playing video games together, because they always had something better to do. They, they were always busy. And this has been something that's really frustrated me, because it's really soured my experience of playing video games. I'm sure many of you have seen a lot of videos cropping up for a while now, and maybe you've even watched them, where people are talking about how gaming isn't fun anymore. And this video will fall under that umbrella a little bit, but I think you might find I have a bit of a different perspective about it. So, when people talk about how gaming isn't fun anymore, some people will blame the games industry, some people will blame corporate culture and capitalism, some people will blame gamers, etc. I'm not going to place any blame squarely at the feet of a group or system or corporation or whatever, but this video is going to be about calling out someone who I think has by far the greatest power to do something about it. Which is you. Because in my opinion, there's a lot of overlap between the attitudes people have about playing video games, whether they're gamers or not, and the feeling that gaming as a hobby is getting less fun. Even though there's so much more to play than there was when I was growing up. So let me tell you a little story about a game I used to play when I was growing up with my brother. I'm gonna call this game Little Timmy. Little Timmy was a game that my brother and I came up with while we were playing Grand Theft Auto Vice City. And the rules for Little Timmy were simple. One of us would be in charge of the controller, and then we would find or steal an ambulance. We would drive the ambulance around, trying to cause as much mayhem and chaos and get in as much trouble with the police as possible, without completely destroying the ambulance or the game was over. While we were driving the ambulance, we would both pretend we were EMTs. One driving the ambulance, the other sitting in the front seat or in the back area where they load patients. And the entire time we're doing this, we would pretend that there was a terminally sick child in the back of the ambulance named Little Timmy. So we would drive around in the ambulance and be like, Don't worry, Little Timmy, as long as that IV stays firmly in place, you're gonna be okay! And then we would smash into a motorcycle, or ride off a ramp, or just wreck directly into a wall. And then we might say something like, Oh no! Little Timmy's IV bag burst, and it's going everywhere! Quick, grab a new one from the back! And then maybe the police would shoot at us, and we'd go, Oh no! The bullets have pierced all of the IV bags! What are we gonna do? We'll have to get to the hospital quicker somehow! And then maybe we'd spot a ramp that led directly into a body of water, and we'd go, Quick! I think that ramp is a shortcut! And just as we approached the ramp, one of us would go, Wait a minute! That ramp doesn't lead to the hospital! 
And then we'd jump out just before the ambulance went onto the ramp, and it would ramp off into the water, and one of us might say something like, oh, Don't worry, there's a whirlpool in that part of the river. I think it leads to the hospital. Now, ignoring me and my brother's intensely morbid sense of humor, we were having a lot of fun. But the point of that story is that nothing that we were doing was actually related to the video game that we were playing. Rockstar Games did not develop Little Timmy. Little Timmy was a game that my brother and I co-developed and produced in our bedroom, which was inspired by the sandbox universe of Grand Theft Auto Vice City. And this is a very different way of thinking about playing a video game. Because traditionally, gamers think of video games as being an experience that is entirely crafted by the developer. But the strange thing is, we'll praise good video games, which allow us to quote-unquote express ourselves through gameplay, but when we play a video game we don't like, or even if we judge a video game that we haven't even played, we'll conveniently place the blame squarely on the shoulders of the developers for not realizing the vision that we had of what the game should have been. It's like a good video game is good because of how I chose to express myself in it, but a bad video game is bad because the developer failed their duties. And this is where you often hear the complaint that gamers are too needy. Because rather than introspecting about how your own expectations of a game are the reason you're disappointed, you instead place all of the blame on the developers. And while that's certainly not the whole problem, I definitely think it's the area where the most meaningful discussion is to be had. You see, this video series I've been making is actually a great example of me doing this exact thing. Because I've been complaining for years and years that Minecraft isn't fun anymore. And in the first video in this series, I tried to explore why. And something I'm not sure I even realized by the end of producing that video is that it turns out that the reason why I haven't been able to enjoy Minecraft in a long time is because I never actually understood why I even liked Minecraft in the first place. And once I dug down and really reflected on it, I realized that Mojang developing things I don't like and Microsoft making executive decisions I don't like absolutely have something to do with hurting my experience, but that it's completely unfair to blame them entirely when actually I could have been having fun the whole time. All I needed to do was not update the game past beta 1.7.3, because that version was the peak of what I loved about Minecraft, and I haven't enjoyed it since. And so the question is, was it Mojang's fault that I stopped liking Minecraft? Or my fault? And my answer to that is, it is absolutely my fault. Why should I expect Mojang to only do with the video game what I want? Because I paid for the game? Well, that was my decision too. And I think that paying $20 for a game in like 2009 means that decades later, the company who owns it should not be allowed to change it in any way that I don't like? I know it's tempting to blame the developers and to see everything I just said as a perfect example of like why I'm in the right, but hear me out. Why can't I just play something else? I mean, sure, it's disappointing to see something you like become something you don't, but the thing about Minecraft is, it didn't. Minecraft updates are not and have never been mandatory. I didn't have to update the game. But I was entitled to the idea that a game update should always make a video game better for me. When the truth of the matter is, the only reason I was having a bad time playing Minecraft was because I was entitled to that idea. And every time the game updated, I just blindly updated my game. And then I expected to have the exact same experience I've always had, and better, even though that's completely unreasonable for a game that is always being developed and therefore always being changed. Eventually, there's gonna be a change I don't like. And the great thing about Minecraft is, I can just mod the game into something I do like better. If there's a future change I do like, someone will probably make a backport mod so that I can play with that feature. And if there's anything I don't like, I don't have to update the game. And so, I have very little sympathy for people who, like I used to, complain that Minecraft isn't good anymore. Because I realize now that it's such an entitled thing to do, when I can just enjoy the game I already liked years ago. Because if Mojang is truly ruining the game, then everyone will just abandon it eventually anyways. And if they do play these new versions and they do enjoy it, what exactly is wrong with that? Yeah, I don't like having to screw around with enchantments and villager trades in the combat system. That's all crap to me. But some people love it. Some people speedrun Minecraft. 
Their way of playing Minecraft is opening a world and doing the exact same sequence of things over and over and over until they shave off a single millisecond. And they'll do that for, who knows, weeks? Months? Years? That's fun to someone. Why am I entitled to an experience that is tailored only to my tastes? Just because I'm disappointed when it isn't? Well, how is any game developer supposed to know exactly what I want to deliver it to me without also sacrificing all the things everybody else wants that my desires directly conflict with? Was Rockstar supposed to predict that me and my brother were gonna play Little Timmy? Was a Rockstar executive supposed to hold a meeting and go, hey guys, uh, we better program in drivable ambulances and make a game mode where the ambulance can get as banged up as possible until you decide to blow it up? And uh, wh while we're at it, let's design proprietary microphones that you can plug into the USB ports on the PS2 so that you can speak directly to Little Timmy? And uh, l uh, let's innovate an AI system that's more advanced than anything at the time where Little Timmy will respond with pained groans every time you speak or bang up the ambulance? And and let's do, let's do all that because earlier I was in the bathroom snorting all of our crack and I realized that two kids in West Virginia might really appreciate that if we did all of that, so let's do it. Yeah, no, that's ridiculous. A game developer's job isn't to make everyone happy. It's to make a fun game. And to expect developers to satisfy every single person's entire individual perception of what constitutes fun is a selfish and greedy perspective. And it was entirely because of that perspective that I wasn't able to enjoy playing Minecraft anymore. Because all I had to do to have fun again was just reflect on my own behavior. So I ask again, was it Mojang and Microsoft's fault? No. Notch made a great game. And at a certain point, for me, it was perfect. So now I'm playing that game, and I'm having a great time. And Mojang and Microsoft can go make as many updates as they like. I'm never going to play them. But as long as I keep getting to play this version, I'm happy. I don't need everyone else to lose the game that they like so that everybody agrees that the way I play the game is the best way, because it's not. It's the best way for me, and that's enough. And if someone wanted to play newer Minecraft with me, I'd be like, hell yeah, let's go. I can have fun on somebody else's terms because I'm not greedy and selfish and entitled. I can play their game, and I'll find a way to have fun if I'm not having fun. The problem that I had was that I didn't know how to have fun. A video game that was very fun was placed directly into my lap, and I didn't know how to appreciate it, because I didn't realize that I had to, or I wasn't willing to, figure out how or why. And what I want to communicate with this video is that this is not just about video games. This is about the unwillingness to play a game. If gaming won't get better, it won't be because it can't. It will be because people's habits and perspectives, not just about video games, but about a lot of things in their lives, have become selfish and naive. And there's a pervasive unwillingness to change that, and an entitlement towards the idea that it was someone else's fault, and someone else's responsibility. And in my opinion, that's the worst problem with gaming today. To illustrate this, let's not even think about video games for a second. Let's imagine you're a little kid, and you're holding a stick. Now, when you pick up a stick, what do you do with the stick? Well, the stick doesn't tell you. The stick, in fact, is just a stick. It is your perspective of what the stick could be used for that turns the stick into a tool. Now, it can be a practical tool. It can light a fire, it can build a shelter, it can attach to a piece of metal so it becomes a weapon, but it can also be a tool for entertainment by using your imagination. You can use the stick to pretend that you're a wizard, casting magic spells at evil demons. Now let me ask you, when you were a kid waving a stick forward to cast a spell to kill a demon, do you get indignant about the fact that the stick did not actually cast a spell? Do you get pissed off that there's not actually any demon there? Of course you don't. And you know why? Because you made the rules of the game, and the rules were fair. You get to imagine that you're a wizard, but actual magical powers and evil demonic forces don't have to actually manifest. It's just fun to imagine that they're there. Now let's say I want to play a game with you. So I have a stick, and I give you a stick. And I say, we're going to pretend we're hockey players. But the problem is, you don't want to pretend to play hockey, you want to play wizards. So you say, well that doesn't sound like any fun, I want to play wizards. And then your friend gets kind of mad, and he says, but I want to play hockey. 
And then you kind of bicker about it for a while, and eventually you get so mad at each other that you just give up on the idea entirely, and neither of you ends up getting to play anything. And the funny thing is, both of those kids are thinking the same thing about the other kid. Which is that, well, I'm trying to have fun, but this other kid is no fun. Because they're not willing to even entertain the idea of my idea, which I think is really fun. But the real problem here is that neither of those kids realizes that just because something is fun for them doesn't mean it's fun for someone else. And that part of what you're supposed to learn through playing games as a kid is cooperation. So instead of us getting mad at each other, you could have stepped up and asked me, Hey, you know what? I'll play hockey with you, but afterwards, can we play Wizards? And I'll probably just be like, yeah, sure, let's play. As long as I've been taught things like fairness and sharing. And if I haven't, well, then you'll try to be fair with me, and I'll be like, no, we can only play hockey. And then, you know, hey, you probably shouldn't play games with me because I'm no fun. And the thing is, video games are no different. They're a tool in a similar way. The developer has a responsibility, which is to give you, the player, a game that both of you can play, since you can't develop the game yourself. And the rules of a video game are simple. The developer does the heavy lifting to create a game world that's fun for you to interact with. And the developer gets to have fun when you have fun interacting with it. You can almost think of it like a parent building a sandbox for their kid. Now imagine if you built a sandbox for your kid, and they see the sandbox, and they don't even go into it. They just start complaining that they don't want a sandbox. They want a trampoline. So you buy them a trampoline. And they use it for like a couple days and then get bored and never use it again. And that's when you learn a very crucial lesson as a parent. That trying to always satisfy what your kid wants will not be fun for you or them. You might not know exactly what you did wrong, but the one thing you do know is that just giving in to the child's desires didn't work. And so what good game developers do is they stick to what they know is fun for them. And a good game developer will be able to take criticism and see how, if they added something or changed something, that it would actually enhance the core experience of what makes their game fun, or just make it more fun for more people. Minecraft has completely changed from what it originally was. Originally, it was just a game about building stuff with colorful blocks. Then it became a survival game about collecting resources and then building things with blocks. Then it became a game about min-maxi farming techniques that allow you to optimally and efficiently collect resources to survive and build stuff with colorful blocks. My favorite Minecraft is the one in the middle. Pure freedom and creativity gives me a little bit of analysis paralysis, and wasting time on enchantments and villager trades is kind of tedious to me. But having a simple palette of resources where everything has a specific purpose that doesn't overlap with anything else, while also technically being in a survival situation, even if it's not particularly tense or anything, and having to actually work to collect the resources that I'm building with, seems to be the sweet spot of fun for me. And in my opinion, the right response is to be grateful for that. Thank God I found a game that is just perfect for me, and I love playing it. And if I ever stopped loving playing it, you know what I'd do? I'd find another game to play. I would not go complain to my dad that my sandbox isn't fun anymore, because for God's sake, the guy worked really hard to build it for me. And it actually meant a lot to him that I enjoyed it. So I could at least have the decency and compassion for the person who made this thing for me to not bother them with every trivial problem that I have with it and act vindictive about the fact that they've imposed a bunch of suffering on me by not being everything that I wanted. And if he buys me a trampoline and I don't want a trampoline, I'll tell him the truth but I'm not just gonna yell at him and be vindictive about it. I'm gonna take a little responsibility. I'm gonna try to understand why I don't like the trampoline, so that when I tell him I don't like it, then I can tell him what he can do about it, rather than just leaving him alone to feel guilty about hurting my feelings. My point here is not that the games industry and many game developers don't make mistakes. Remember, I was always on that side this whole time. I've just come to sympathize with the opposite perspective. That gamers, like me, are often far too immature, ungrateful, and in some cases, uncreative to actually enjoy anything that they play. And you can tell that that happens. Because think of all the people, many of you who are listening to this included, who, for example, have a Steam library or a video game collection that has tens, hundreds, maybe even more than a thousand games. And you look at that library and what do you say? I don't have anything to play. Well, I call bullshit. Let me tell you what I think happens, okay? This is just my opinion. You boot up a game like Stardew Valley, 
And then you look up a wiki and Google optimal strategies for completing the community center as fast as possible. Rather than immerse yourself in a narrative about a real human being trying to escape from the meat grinder of corporate life by cultivating a new life in a new, fantastical place full of magic and unique personalities and enjoying the experience of getting close to these fictional characters and their personal lives, you instead do exactly what the game's message is against. You turn something with the potential for novel fun into a mechanical process of just following someone else's guide. So you don't end up having your own personal experience or doing anything fulfilling. You just work to do everything as perfectly and optimally as possible and miss the whole damn point of the game. Then wonder why you can't enjoy yourself past year two. And even though you've been playing the game for tens or hundreds of hours, for some strange reason, it feels like playing it again would just be a waste of time. Or maybe you boot up a competitive game like League of Legends or Valorant or Fortnite or Overwatch or Rust, what have you. And you drop into the game and the first goal you set for yourself is, I'm gonna win it all. I'm gonna carry my team, I'm gonna get a bunch of kills, my clan is gonna build a huge base, and we're gonna be perfect. Because I'm good at this game. And that's what I deserve, is to have a perfect experience. And then you get killed. And your team gets wiped. And your base gets raided. And your response is to get mad about it. And that's not enough. You tell yourself, you're not mad. Your team is inting. Their team is trolls, and the game is bullshit. And then you queue up for another round, never doing any kind of introspection at all about the fact that you hated the experience, because you are still chasing that entitled feeling you have, that because you're good at this game, the game should let you win. Or maybe you boot up a game like the Soul series, and then even though everyone ever has warned you that these games are hard, and that they take a lot of trial and error, you end up at a boss you can't beat, and you just keep butting your head against the wall without changing your strategy or taking a break or doing literally anything to try and innovate your way out of the scenario. I mean, you can always just leave and level up a little bit and then maybe you'll be strong enough to just beat it, but you're not gonna do that because you can do it. And because you think you can do it, again, the game should let you. You know, maybe you don't go to indie game websites like itch.io or do research into smaller titles and maybe take a chance on a game that not a lot of people have played. See, you only play AAA games or games that are popular, games that lots of people have reviewed, games that are in somebody's top 10 or top 100 or top 250. Because if you spent money on a game that wasn't very popular and that not a lot of people liked, there's no guarantee that you can blame the company if the game sucks. Which means if you don't have fun, you might have to blame like an indie developer who it's completely unreasonable to expect much from since they're so small and can't do nearly the same level of things that a major corporation can. Or you'll have to blame yourself. And who wants to be responsible for wasting their own money and time? It's so much easier to just stick to the major titles because after all, they're supposed to be the best. Which means that they don't conflict with your sense of entitlement that they have to be fun then you're free to complain about them if you don't like them and feel totally free of responsibility. Because the developers and everybody who played the game told you it's supposed to be fun. It's one of the best games there is. So you can just blame them for saying that. And this kind of behavior isn't exclusive to gamers. It happens with non-gamers too. I've watched people who don't play video games try to play a game. And then they just rage at every single little thing that challenges them. Anything, anything at all, down to just not knowing how to navigate a menu. And then they feel humiliated, they feel vulnerable, they feel frustrated, and they rage. Sometimes in more flagrant ways than the gamers do. The gamers are just more or less good at hiding their rage through a semi-decent level of competence at the games they play. That's why they play the same games over and over, because they're comfortable and complacent with only ever being good at everything, and not having to experience challenge or failure. So if they get a new game, it has to be fun in the way every game they've already played is fun, or they're afraid they won't be any good, and that makes them feel afraid and insecure. And we do this to each other as well. We'll invite someone to play a game with us, and, gamer or not, the moment we see them struggling, we get upset. We get impatient with their journey of trying to figure out how the game works. So we just tell them everything. We get angry and go, ugh, you just have to do this. It's easy. Come on. You can do it. And it's like, great, man. That's a lot of fun. 
You know, they could have had their own experience and really enjoyed that, and you could have just backed off and allowed them to do that. But again, you're so entitled to the experience you want to have that you forced a tutorial on them and made them have to play the game the way you think it should be played. And don't all of us complain when the game developers do that. Yet when someone we're playing a game with struggles, the first thing we do is just start explaining everything to them. Remember, video games are just another form of game. And you might not have realized this, but games are the way that we do everything in our life. We set up some rules for ourselves, and then we're free to do whatever, but within the confines of the rules. That's a game, and that's life. For example, if I want to have a conversation with you, then the first thing that I have to do is have some established rules of how to have a conversation. I need to know how to play the conversation game. So like, I'm not allowed to hit you, and you're not allowed to hit me. And because I assume that both of us don't want violence, I feel safe having a conversation with you. And if you strike me, then I call the rule enforcers and tell them, hey, this guy broke the rules of being a civilian. We were having a normal conversation and then he struck me. And then that guy gets sent off to the place where they punish people who break rules. Here's another example. If I want to eat dinner, but I've never made dinner before, and I don't think I'd be very good at it and someone tells me to make my own dinner, I'm gonna be like, no way, I'm ordering a pizza. Because I know how the game of ordering a pizza works. So even though it's a lot more expensive and it's going to be a lot less healthy and gratifying for me, I'm more willing to play the order a pizza game because I know the rules and they aren't nearly as challenging. That is the definition of what it means to be lazy. You don't want to play challenging games, period. You want all of your games to be fun and easy. So when you aren't having fun, maybe it's your rules that are the problem. And I think for a lot of people, one of the rules they have when they play a video game, and many games in their real life, is I can't fail. I can't be humiliated. I can't be challenged. If I have to change who I am in order to fit the game I'm playing, I'm just going to play a different game. So it's no shock to me that everyone is starting to wake up and have this universal realization that's echoing across the internet right now that, hey, maybe video games aren't the problem. Maybe we're the problem. Maybe the reason that the gaming industry keeps feeding us crap is because we're perfectly happy to eat it, as long as it's easy and we can keep complaining that it sucks without consequences. And my friends, that has nothing to do with video games. That has to do with the character of the individuals buying the video games. So if you want to know why video games suck now, we can argue that the limitations of old consoles bred creativity. We can argue that the industry is trying to take advantage of us. We can argue that many game developers themselves don't actually understand or are not willing to put the effort into what makes a video game fun. We can argue that the culture around video games has become superficial and profit-oriented. We can argue that social media is the problem. We can argue and argue and argue and nothing will ever get solved. Now, I don't want this message to come across insensitive. The message of this video is not to wag my finger at everyone who does that. It's just to try to communicate that maybe you do need to introspect about your own behavior. You don't have to blame yourself for everything, but you should look inside yourself and try to understand why you do what it is you do, because you might actually have the power to change it. So if you want to solve the problem of games not being fun right now, let me offer you this wisdom. When you have a problem, any problem in your life, If in your analysis of that problem, you are not willing or capable to include a thorough analysis of your own perspective, you are part of the problem. You are someone that does not actually understand what they feel or what they want because they can't or won't truly investigate and understand that and are just judging everyone and everything other than yourself. And if you're playing a game and you are unwilling to entertain the idea that you could be playing the game wrong and that you should try to understand how you might be able to make it better for yourself, how is anyone supposed to make a game for you? Because you'll never take your own perspective into account. It'll always be someone else's fault. And what that means is you're no fun. So before you go complaining about the games industry again, take a look at the way you play games. And then imagine you're a developer that has to develop that game. And then ask yourself, is that reasonable? Is that realistic? Could I do that? Well, I'll tell you what's not reasonable or realistic. Expecting a game to be fun for you without the developer doing anything to challenge your expectations or perspective. Because there's actually already a game where you don't have to do anything to earn the reward. 
You don't have to think, you don't have to be a better person, the whole thing just comes naturally, and it's always pleasurable, and there's no resistance, and you can do whatever you want, and it's always fun, and you can always have what you want, and you get to beat it just by being everything you already are. And on top of that, it's totally free to everyone in the world. It's called masturbation. All the AAA games now are dopamine traps. You know why? Because the gamers have spoken. They don't want challenge. They don't want captivating experiences. They don't want to be forced to think outside the box or grow as a person. They want to masturbate to their own constant success in a virtual world that never denies them. And as long as that's what they want, gaming will never get better for them. And the games industry will continue to feed their addiction. People are turning to video games to get what they can't get out of their real life. It's often said that the moment when you don't need love anymore, you're ready to handle it. It's the same way with fun. Once you can accept that a fun experience doesn't have to be fun the whole time, and you learn how to tolerate and maybe even enjoy those confusing moments where you don't know what to do, and the process of imagining and innovating and creating a fun experience for yourself in spite of the circumstances becomes the fun, then all of life gets a lot more fun. Even someone who's never played a game before can have a lot of fun just learning the rules. And you know that because once upon a time, you were a kid, man. And when you were a kid and there was a game to play, even when you'd never heard of the game before, you just played it and you enjoyed it. You were even excited to play it even when you didn't know the rules or you'd never heard of the game before. So, when did you stop? And why? Figure that out, you'll start having fun again. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I'll see you later.